Hello and welcome. Welcome to session three. This is our third session of the Gustavo's Online Book Club, where we just have fun chatting about the book and exchanging ideas and comments and answering questions. Uh, and then always doing one or two little cooking demos. So today we have chapter two, which is short, but sometimes short is, um, is packed with information. And I feel like that's what happens here with chapter two. We will be able to go over it tonight and then I will show you what I made. And um, at any point, please, it doesn't bother me. You can always type in the chat, but if at any point you want to unmute and say something or ask a question or make a comment, feel free to do that. So I'm in chapter two, and this is page 40. So we were talking about how, um, you know, food really is what wins people. You can, you can lecture, you can show pictures and movies, and all those are very powerful ways. Um, and, um, you know, to let people know how great it is to eat whole food, plant-based. But really, it is when they put that bite in their mouth or when they see this beautiful, colorful, simple dish that you've made. So uh, she says, we are bold and brave in the kitchen, which means we're willing to be adventurers and totally mess up. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I've messed up quite a few times creating my own things. And But one way or another, I've combined it or done something and some other creation, um, you know, appeared. And she says, we are masters at failing and trying anew. For example, no one would eat the millet and rice flour muffins that I worked hard to develop for this book. I finally poked them into the bird feeder for the birds and squirrels, and they wouldn't even eat. <laughs> eat them. I thought that was so funny. Uh, I'm sure it wasn't funny at that time, but anyway, yet the same recipe did lead us to the seed and millet crackers on page 203, which is a winner. And um, I, you know, I, I haven't tried them, so maybe I will. Maybe I'll make them. Uh, and then did she, they talk about how you can create new food traditions in your family. It doesn't have to be that turkey for Thanksgiving. It doesn't have to be that, uh, you know, chocolate cake for your birthday or whatever it is. You know, so she says, black beans and brown rice with loads of toppings is our favorite on Christmas Eve. I personally love that. And you all know that in the seven day program, we one of the meals we do is, is the black, is the burrito bowl. Basically it is uh, brown rice at the bottom and we make the lime cilantro rice with black beans on top. It could be other beans and then salsa and then just pile up veggies. Uh, I love the crunchiness of lettuce and then you can put chopped tomatoes and corn and I mean just uh, a, a, a whole lot of different uh, toppings um, the uh, mixture that I make with sauteed onions and red green and yellow peppers as well so you create new food traditions and no birthday party is complete without artichokes which I thought it was funny, yeah, but you know, they have created this uh, tradition. Occasionally, we reboot old favorites, like the newest version of our chocolate cake with a German chocolate frosting when we want to show off, okay? And amaretto cherry chocolate hazelnut scones when an army of kids arrives after swimming practice. So 
we feel strongly that eating plant-based doesn't mean depriving yourself of the pleasures of eating. A few months into this cooking project, we knew we were on the right path when our recipe tally stood at 10 breakfasts, eight lunches, and 44 desserts right on target. Okay, so now we will skip page 41. I'll leave that for your own reading. And um, here comes a real, what I think is a really good page. Um, I have underlined a lot and I have written on the sides and the margins here. So food as medicine, food as medicine. So it says on the second paragraph, investing just a few minutes into cooking your own plant-based food translates directly to adding healthy years to your own life. And here comes something that is true. I'm sure we all uh, struggle in one way or another with this. Processed foods, which by the way, they are addictive. You know, when we talk about food addiction, we're really talking about processed food addiction. So processed foods, packaged foods, prepared foods, and take out food incessantly tempt us. Yeah, they are tempting. Many of them are still tempting. With their chemically achieved bliss point of sugar, salt, and fat, you've got to know that these uh, companies spend millions of dollars and sometimes years in research to get just the right amount of salt, sugar and fat just to create enough synapses in your brain to get you addicted to it. This is this, this is known facts. So yeah, they tempt us. Mm -hmm. they, they are tempting many times. Uh, remember that these companies are companies that are there to make money. They're not there to take care of your health. Okay, the, nobody is really, I don't think, uh, it's a conspiracy to get you all sick. It's just they need to sell their products. They need to make them addictive. They need customers that will come back. So um, it says here, Wendell Berry's famous quote nails it. People are fed by the food industry, which pays no attention to health and are treated by the health industry, which pays no attention to food. Oh my gosh, how, what a, how true that is. Um, okay, and here comes the paragraph that I think you should all highlight or underline, maybe make a few sticky notes or something. This is a really good paragraph right here. It says, and, and sorry, Anne and I, are hard, hardwired to prepare food to prevent disease, which is reflected in the ingredients we use. Okay, so here we go. We tend to cook with walnuts more often than other nuts due to the healthy omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. I don't know if you've heard this, but... Um, it is important for us to get the omega fatty acids. And um, it is also important that we get a good uh, balance, okay, of the omega-3 and the omega-6, okay? Hold on, let me get something here. Okay. All right. So... Um, I, I made a note there, as you all know, or many of you know, um, I am not addicted to one, to any kind of nuts. I just, I, I like them, but I don't, uh, I can eat one or two. Uh, so when I do eat some, I usually put them in a salad. I think that's the best way to put walnuts or nuts. Um, 
very, very, very seldom I might get two or three, just eat them like that. But I'm going to make a note to use walnuts because uh, it's I'm reminded of the ratio of omega-3 and 6 here. That's somehow I just kind of forgot. So walnuts. Is it necessary that we eat walnuts or any kind of nuts to be healthy? No, it really isn't. Everything that the walnuts or nuts have is in other um, in other ingredients and foods that we use, especially if we are using chia seeds. Um, so, uh, and, and we we should be using that with with breakfast or other places and flax seeds as well. Those are good for the omega three and six. Okay, so then it says it's the same reason. We often spoon flaxseed meal or chia seeds into our meals wherever possible. Okay, so remember that. You can put these seeds in salads. You can put them in your oatmeal, in your, um, in your, just about everywhere. You know, I, like, um, oh, yes. sorry. No, I was going to okay. say, okay, um, I read somewhere about... <clears throat> mixing half and half um mm -hmm. the flax meal with the chia seeds so i put them in a little bowl in the refrigerator and then i've got both of them and i just put them on my oatmeal i just thought that that was so much more convenient than deciding yes. which one each day had i've been using because they both totally, have their own benefits right you're totally right i think that's that is a very good way i i um, sometimes I do that. I have it already mixed. Sometimes I don't, and I just mix them on the spot. But it's, it's very good. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Um, so another thing that uh, it's that they use a lot is turmeric, and I also do it. Um, so it says when we cook with turmeric, we try to include black pepper to help with bioavailability. And this is something that I didn't know. I mean, I only known this a year or two years ago. Uh, I didn't know that black pepper really helps absorb uh, turmeric. Okay, so that's another good point to add this. Anne votes for adding turmeric to everything, literally everything. Um, then, Another little piece of advice here, uh, I just think that this paragraph has a lot of really good information. Arugula is our green of choice as it is best for boosting nitric oxide production, which is crucial to vascular health. We all know the list of the greens that Dr. Sostein gives us. And some of them are really not green, as you all know, um, like the cauliflower, for example, um, but um, I am of the idea that it's good to have variety and some of these vegetables have some nutrients that others don't. So I just mix and match. But um, I eat arugula, but not as often as others. Um, so I'm also going to try to include a little more arugula to my, in my salads. And arugula can also be cooked as well. Mm -hmm. so um and then she says and we sneak oranges blueberries mangoes or tomatoes into our salads to be sure we get enough vitamin c yeah we always talk about including at least one type of fruit in our salads and i think it is a really good idea to include little either those small tangerines or oranges or well, of course, I just um, uh, love mangoes and blueberries, of course, tomatoes. I, I have fruit. a question. Yes. The the part that talked about adding the black pepper, do, does that mean just regular black pepper that you get from the grocery store? Regular, regular black pepper. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I tend to like to buy those containers where you get the, the pepper... Uh, and, yeah. and the actual pepper 
what do you call it seeds i don't know what they are so that you kind of make it fresh yeah yeah i like the fresh the uh, corn corn that's right okay there you go well um yeah because vitamin c like it says here helps to mobilize iron into the blood okay and so these things that we just mentioned in this paragraph i want to encourage you to make them a habit in your in your eating that's what i'm going to do uh, well i mean i already do a lot of this but um, i'm really going to um, i've marked this page so that i will do something like i i do use turmeric and black pepper i i, I use uh you know omega-3 but not with walnuts anyway really good paragraph then in the next paragraph in the middle, it says some recipes do use some avocado and nuts, which are not part of a plant-based diet for those with heart disease. This is important. If someone here is watching, you have heart disease and you want to reverse it or at least stop it. But as we all know, it is in many cases or in most cases, as Dr. SLC presented in his book, reversible. And um, then those are not things you want to add. Avocado and nuts are, are going to delay the reversal and the healing. You want to leave those out. And they say, you know, but those are foods that we enjoy on occasion. Honestly, the dessert section is our favorite as it has a bazillion more recipes than, recipes than the dessert chapters in other books that we have. And... Um, so what are the guidelines? Well, the guidelines, we all know them, right? Um, and we should, we should ingrain them in our brain. So no meat of any kind, no dairy, nothing that comes from a, a, an, an, something that comes from a mother, okay? Like Dr. Esselstyn says. So no meat, no dairy, no added oil, that means that uh, you know added oil is when we actually get the the oil without the fiber and the water and basically no nutrients. But you know there is oil in a lot of the foods, especially in avocados and olives, but in others as well. So they're just saying no, not not adding liquid oil, and then minimal salt and minimal sweet. Um. So let's see here. And the next page, which is 43, uh, it says, we also keep our salt used to a minimum. Salt preference, preference is quite personal and it's an ingredient that is easy to adjust. In our kitchens, we tend to use low sodium tamari which is like soy sauce with some of our, uh, let's see what it says here, with some of our um, plant-based women warrior pals are quickly to grab liquid aminos. Either is fine, okay? Either one is fine. Most often when we list salt in our ingredients lists, we indicate that it is optional or to taste. And we all know how addictive salt is we all know that that is a technique used in restaurants so that you will eat more and that you will drink more. And we all know, because we've seen it with our own eyes in our seven-day program, when, when we, for just one week, when we don't eat salt, our body gets rid of all of this liquid that we're carrying around because of the sodium. And we just lose, we can lose up to eight, 10 pounds in a week. The blood pressure drops. And um, so if that's you, you know, try giving up salt. It's easier now that there are so many good salt substitutes and one in particular, Benson's Table Tasty is truly uh, an amazing and natural, totally natural and totally compliant. It's called Benson's table tasty it really makes it taste salty but it has celery and it has other um, plants 
that give the taste of saltiness without the salt. So next paragraph, sweetness is similarly subjective and easy to tweak. We try our best to use maple syrup, fruit, or dates for sweetening. In my particular case, I use fruit and dates and more fruits than anything else. Uh, from time to time, some dates. And I um, almost don't use maple syrup anymore, but I'm you know, using it sparingly and not at every day and not every meal. You know, I don't think it's a, it's a big issue unless you're and it's going to trigger something and you're a sugar addict. So you want to just kind of uh, go with, with natural sugars in the fruit. So some desserts can be heavy on maple syrup. We know, she says, but we consider these to be occasional treats. This is important to me because I too sometimes post a recipe on YouTube. And in the book that is coming up that uh, Shada uh, and I are writing, we have some recipes that um, that are meant to be treats. So um, there's no point in criticizing that. You know, don't don't think that we eat that those things every day. Uh, those are there for special treats to take somewhere so that it may be a way to to talk to people so they can see that you can make delicious things without eggs and milk and cream and, and you know processed sugar and so but but they're there for for special occasions so uh there are some ingredients in our recipes she says such as ketchup barbecue sauce poison sauce and pickled ginger that contain plain old sugar which we prefer to high fructose corn syrup. We use condiments sparingly. You know, again, those, those things that I just listed are condiments, they're not main meals. And if you use them as condiments, it's, um, you know, in most cases, it's okay. We use condiments sparingly and we suggest you look for ones that ideally do not have sugar listed as the first ingredient on the label. And I don't know if you know this, but uh, we must have the habit of reading labels. Uh, you know, labels can be complicated with all those numbers and percentages, but you know, the easiest way is to go down in the ingredient list and just look at the ingredients. The first three ingredients are always the ones that, um, take the most uh, percentage of whatever the product is. So after the third, you're getting into more of the safest zone. So if the first ingredient is sugar, you wanna put that back on the shelf. But if everything looks pretty healthy and there are 10 ingredients and the ninth ingredient says sugar, well, that means that there is very little. It's up to you at that point to decide if you want to get it. If it says oil, I don't care if it's in the 20th ingredient, I just don't get it, okay? But with salt and sugar, depending on what I'm using it for and how much I'm going to use, et cetera, um, I, may, I may get it. Okay, so that's the end of chapter two. And um, I want to say a few things about the recipes on chapter four that are the breakfast recipes. And um, I want to uh, say something, starting on page 56, um, there is something that says morning commute. These are oats. I think that that's, uh, this is a, another good recipe that is fast to make. It has old fashioned rolled oats um, some fresh or fr thought frozen blueberries, um, peach, fresh peach or canned peaches, banana, and um, then it has chia seeds and flax seeds, and uh, and then uh, almond milk. It's optional, he says, and walnuts, which personally I wouldn't use it, but this is um. Place the oats in a microwavable bowl 
add just enough water to you know, cover the oats about one cup, microwave for one minute, and then stir a few times, heat for an additional minute, repeat for a third minute if needed, and you know, just, just add the other ingredients. That's a quick way to make a, um, a breakfast. I um, also, let's see here. Um, what's the other one that I wanted to mention? Uh, there's one that looks very intriguing to me, and it's this one. And um, it's on page 67. I don't think I'm going to make it. Um, it just has, uh, I don't know. It's it's really not bad, but I don't know. Well, maybe I will. Maybe, maybe I might try that. It it really looks interesting. Um, okay, what others that I wanted to mention here? Oh, the sweet potato start. That's on page seventy two. Um, a sweet potato for breakfast is really good. I know it sounds really simple, but if the sweet potato has been roasted enough and it has all that wonderful sugar that it looks like caramel coming out of the sweet potato um, and then you cut it in half you put some cinnamon on it maybe some blueberries on it it really can be a wonderful breakfast and especially if you combine it with a, just a little bit of greens just to remember that the, the size of your fist could be broccoli could be asparagus it could be a little bit of kale um, then you have the perfect breakfast but here it says one sweet potato cooked, two tablespoons peanut butter. Okay, that's not gonna happen for me. Uh, and lime juice to taste. And then one tablespoon coarsely chopped peanuts for garnish. I think that this kind of thing is maybe good for kids. You know, they're growing, they, they, are, they spend calories like crazy. So it could be, but definitely uh, it wouldn't be something that I would eat unless I eat it the way I said earlier. The other way on page 73 is the open-faced uh, chickpea omelet, which I think it sounds really delicious. It's just um, that I'm, I am not sure how much uh, it would fill me up, okay? And so I don't know how many omelets I would have to eat. Um, but if I put a lot of uh, mushrooms and onions and spinach, it'll probably be uh, filling. So uh, I think that's a good... It looks, it sounds to me like it would take more time than what I like to spend in the morning. And so... Um, but I think it would be good for for a treat again. Some some Saturday or some Sunday, you want to make a nice uh, brunch and maybe have some people over and have muffins and and pancakes and these uh, uh, omelets and other things. It would be good to try. So today I did try these muffins, and um, as I thought. They are too good. <laughs> they're, they really are too good. So um, they're a winner. I think this is a, it's an amazing recipe. I, I have, I, it, it would be, it's easy for me to eat five or six. So I would make them for something to take somewhere. I would make them if I have people over. I would make them if I'm on a long trip and I know that, um, I might be tempted to grab something that I don't want to eat. And so for things like that, um, but I, for me, it wouldn't work for breakfast, but, but they are absolutely delicious. So I want to show you because uh, in all of these recipes, I make a little change here and there. And um, let me tell you what... Um, I, what I did was I I bought the oat flour, although it's very easy to make. Oh, you can you just put rolled oats in a blender and you make your oat your own oat flour. Uh, I have polenta, 
So there was no problem. And the corn flour is polenta or, or a cornmeal that you put in the blender and you blend it, okay? And then you get the flour. So that's what I, I did. So really the ingredients are not many. And uh, I think it's very important to use fresh corn. If you absolutely cannot get your hands on fresh corn, use frozen. But I did have fresh corn and it's so uh, crispy and, and juicy. It really adds a lot of uh, moist to the muffins. And uh, the dairy milk, the non-dairy milk, I made myself. I really, really like to know exactly what is in the milk and which is um, almonds and water. There's nothing else. I don't have to worry about having anything else. So I made my own. And then the applesauce. Uh, instead of using three tablespoons of maple syrup, I used two. But I did use maple syrup because I was afraid to use, I was a little afraid to use dates because I wasn't sure, you know, the dates are heavier. So I wasn't sure if the muffins would rise. So I did. I have a small bottle of maple syrup that I keep in the refrigerator. It lasts me for months and months because I only use it for special occasions and special recipes like this. Um, and every now and then, if I have one of those days when I really want something to eat then, I will um, have a sweet potato and I will drizzle a little bit of that or, or maybe a drizzle some on a banana, but it's, it's very seldom that I use it, but I do have it. So instead of putting three tablespoons of maple syrup, I put two and I use the blueberries, fresh blueberries. And I want you to see how it came out because I was afraid that they were gonna be flat. A lot of these, muffins where we use whole food plant-based are heavy and so they don't rise and they're kind of uh, dense which is fine but in this case they were fluffy they were just um very very good so uh Mm, then you get the sweetness. All right. Well, I'll just tell you. Yeah, uh, they they are great. The way they look, it's uh, they look beautiful. The combination is is very good because the the blueberries um, uh, were very juicy and sweet. The corn also kept the, the, the liquid, the juice. And so um, everything was moist and uh, it had the sweetness. Now, the thing is that they weren't that sweet. Uh, of course, I put one less tablespoon of, of uh, the maple syrup. And I'm wondering, and I probably will try this, give it a try, what it would be like to make these as savory. So I wouldn't put the blueberries. And I would probably put some chopped chives. Um, I don't know. I'll think of something else to instead of the instead of the blueberries and make them uh, and and not use the maple syrup and use some you know, Benson Stable Tasty or something to give it a little bit of the saltiness taste and just make them savory. I think. Oh, maybe I could put some uh, saute chopped mushroom something I don't know yet but it made me think that I could do that so but it was easy I I ate three one after the other and that's when I realized that hey this is uh this this is uh really addictive of course I hadn't made muffins in a year and a half this that's how long so in a way it was because you know it was something that I hadn't had in a long time but then I put them away and I just kind of forgot about them. And then today I um, I had to go see some friends and I had six left over. Uh, the others, we ate them here. Uh, there are two of us in the house, so it, I didn't eat all 10 of them, okay? But um, um, I could have, but I didn't. And so, But I took them and they disappeared. They are, they, and these are people that are not, plant-based but they they love them so great i i highly 
recommend them. Any Mr. Quite- you could probably freeze those, couldn't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I will. When I make them again, I usually double recipes. In this case, I didn't double it because I wasn't sure how good they were going to be. Although, I think, I mean, Anne and and Jane are amazing. Everything they make is wonderful. But, uh, you know, sometimes, regardless of that, we have our own taste. And so I sometimes I don't like some things. And so I wasn't sure. But I would make... Um, I would make more and freeze them. Yeah. Yes. Any questions about this uh, uh, or anything about the book or about anything, uh, even if it's not the book? Okay. No? All right. Tomorrow we'll do our third chapter and I'll see what I can make. And I want to... Um, give you a heads up on the next book that I will feature, which I have all just finished and I couldn't put it down. It is, I think it is a must for all of us who uh, need to know a little bit more about, um, about why, why eat this way and how to answer some questions that people may have. So the next book I'm going to feature is America Goes Vegan. And so um, if you want to get it, I think you can get this. I'm pretty sure I'll check again, but I'm sure that from Amazon you can get it. Glenn is a a very, a a really good friend of mine. and um, we've we've done a lot of webinars together, and he has um, uh, collaborated in just about every one of Chef AJ's book. And he is helping Shada and myself with our book that is probably going to be coming out in early November. I now have a, a little better idea of when. So that's the next book. And if you want to get it, I know you will love it. And so the book itself is about this much. So it's about 70 pages. The rest is recipes by Tracy Childs. And one of the themes that runs through the books because she says America and America, you know, we think of burgers many times when you think America. So there are a lot of burgers here that I am um, very excited to try. Really good ideas for burgers and burgers can save a lot of time because we can make them and freeze them and they can be a meal that you can have on their own or um, just crumble them in a salad or in just different ways. So that's the next book. Well, um, anything? Gustavo, are you going to do your and Shada's book for a book club? Of course. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's definitely. It's just that I want to make you something special and have some really, really good bonuses and and things to when when we do that book yeah so that's and uh, hopefully that will happen well thank you again for for joining me tonight and um hopefully i'll see you all tomorrow in the meantime if you have any questions or comments send me an email okay bye bye